Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode from NetworkFromHome.com. Today we have a quick video for you on RJ45 connectors. We're going to talk about what RJ45 connectors are, where you can expect to find them, and how they function. I'll have some examples and show you a few things throughout this video, and we'll come out of it knowing what RJ45 connectors are and how they function. And I'll start by saying that RJ45, it's probably a term that you've heard quite a bit of when it comes to home networking and ethernet cables. But a lot of times this term gets thrown around and there's not always a great understanding of what it means. So let's talk about what RJ45 connectors are. We'll start with an example. Here's an ethernet cable at the end of it, as you can see there, let me bring you in closer. At the end of the Ethernet cable is your RJ45 connector. So, right there, you can see here is what an RJ45 connector looks like. Let's see if we can get a zoomed in image of that. All right, there you go. This here is an RJ45 connector. It terminates the end of an Ethernet cable. So you'll see these. You'll see these at the end of every Ethernet cable. Let me bring you back here. So you're going to see these connectors on the end of every Ethernet cable, regardless of the category. So any commonly used Ethernet cable category that you see today, CAT5E, CAT6, CAT8 cables and, and data centers, that will have an RJ45 connector on the end of it. But the important piece there is RJ45. Where does that come from? Well, RJ45 is actually a standard that was established by the FCC and I believe it was 1987. And what that standard essentially did was it just said for connectors that go on ethernet cables, they have to be made a certain way, they have to be wired a certain way, and they need to handle electric signals a certain way. So essentially all this did is it standardized how the connectors on ethernet cables were produced. This made things a lot easier that way, no matter what Ethernet cable you bought, it would have the same connector. Conversely, all the devices that Ethernet cables plug into will have the same port, and they knew what size Ethernet port to make because they knew what size the Ethernet cable connector was going to be. So RJ45, that identifies the standard of the connector that's used on Ethernet cables. So that's an important distinction to make there. Obviously, I think we're all permitted, pretty familiar with the function of an RJ45 connector. I have an example here. We have a docking station, but with an RJ45 connector, all we have to do is we take our ethernet cable, plug it into the ethernet port. It goes in pretty securely. See, I can't pull it out. And that's because of the tab. There's a little tab on the RJ45 connector, which, pre which prevents it from coming out of any device it's connected to. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the components of an RJ45 connector. There's a few that we should pay attention to here. And for that, let me pull up another example here. We will take a look at an RJ45 connector that has not yet been connected to an Ethernet cable. This will give us a clear example. So let me show you. First and foremost, we're going to take a look at the pins on the connector. So as you can see there, there are eight metallic pins right here at the top. And each of those pins 
is for each wire within an Ethernet cable. So what exactly does that mean? Let me go back to my first Ethernet cable here. Inside an Ethernet cable, you will have eight copper wires. And what you see here is, here are four pairs of two wires. And all Ethernet cables will have that. So you have eight wires. When you're adding a connector to that Ethernet cable, each of those wires is crimped onto, or I should say, each of those eight pins in the RJ45 connector are crimped onto each wire within an Ethernet cable. And that's what allows data to move from one end of the Ethernet cable from one device to the device on the other end of the Ethernet cable. That's because data is being sent back and forth with electric electronic signals. And those metallic pins connect to the wires in the cable, which on the other end of the cable connect to another set of pins at that RJ45 connector. And then they go from those pins to that device when the Ethernet cable is plugged into an Ethernet port on that device. So hopefully that was clear. But essentially, the pins connect to the wires. The wires connect to the pins in the connector on the other side of the cable. And those pins connect to the device that it's plugged into. And that allows for the seamless transmission of the electronic signals and data between the two devices. What's the other piece I want to talk about? The other piece I want to discuss in terms of the function of RJ45 connectors is the channels inside of them. So here, we'll, we'll go back to this Ethernet cable. In order to get those wires in the Ethernet cable to align with the pins of the RJ45 connector, there are channels in the RJ45 connector. It's basically a guide, so that way when you put your wires inside the RJ45 connector, it automatically separates them so that they align with a pin in the RJ45 connector. And a good way to demonstrate that is just the fact, if I show you this Ethernet cable, let me do this the right way here. If I show you an Ethernet cable with an RJ45 connector already on it, let's see, see those wires? See how the wires inside the RJ45 connector are all right next to each other and they're aligned side by side? That's because of the channels inside the RJ45 connector. All right, so that pretty much covers RJ45 connectors. RJ45 is the standard that determines the specifications of the connectors that go on Ethernet cables. We've looked at how they plug into devices. We've looked at their features, the most important ones being the pins and then the channels within the RJ45 connector. The last thing I want to cover here is how you attach RJ45 connectors to Ethernet cables. I've made another video about how to do that, which I will link to below. And I also wrote a blog post that goes into more detail about this topic. I will also link to that below. But thank you, thank you for checking out another episode from networkfromhome.com. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.